Hi, I'm Richard White, Senior BIM Consultant for Man & Machine. Today we're going to be looking at Autodesk's vehicle tracking software within your AutoCAD design environment. Vehicle tracking is actually now available as part of your AEC collection and can be easily installed through the, the install, installation tools. Um, once installed, you'll see within your AutoCAD ribbon, you'll get a uh, vehicle tracking tab that you can then select on. Within this tab, we have a, a, a selection of various different design options, um, including swept path analysis, parking and roundabouts, including a review option to be able to animate and look at your swept paths. Today, we're just going to be looking at the initial basics behind what swept path analysis is and how to place it within your uh, design environment and on your site plans. In this getting started guide, we're going to be having a look at the auto drive arc mode the various vehicles that are available to you to add onto your project and the initial settings to allow you to start creating your swept path analysis on your site plans. So let's have a look at the settings. Once you've selected the settings button, you'll be prompted with a settings wizard dialog box. This dialog box will take you through all the various basic settings that you need to set up your project. Initially, we're going to be looking at our scale. It's important for you to understand what scale your drawing is at so that when the vehicles are placed on the drawing they're at the right scale for your uh, site plan. So I know that my plan is actually set up in millimetres so I've set this so, um, so that it's set to one drawing unit represents one millimetre and I have unticked this get below values from drawing wherever available. This ensures that your scale is exactly what it's expecting to be. At the bottom of this page we can also see an advanced options button. For the time being, we're going to leave all these as standard, but should you want to go into this um, selection dialog to understand a little bit more about the background of what the vehicle tracking is doing, then you can actually fiddle around with some of the options within there too. For the time being, we're going to carry on going through the wizard. The second page of our wizard shows our preferred uh, units that we want to use within our project. This will be our distance set up for our vehicles, our preferred speed, so in this instance I'm going to change this to miles per hour, and our preferred angular units, which is degrees. Following on from this, we also have an option to auto-create some layers for our AutoCAD drawing. This is quite key because it will allow us to control visually which um, swept path analysis um, tracks we have set up on our project. Each one will create its own uh, set of layers. Um, and by using the auto create layering convention option, um, it'll do all this for us without us actually having to create each new object layer. Moving on from here, we're going on to our turn transitions. We're going to keep this as it is standard. And then we move on to our design speeds. As standard, the design forward speed is set as 5 miles an hour. I'm going to increase this to 15 and leave our reverse speed at 2.5 miles an hour for the time being. Our next page shows our steering limits. I don't really want to fiddle with some of these, so I'm just going to leave these as they are out of the box, um, as, as the same with our articulation limits. So this will be specific to articulated vehicles um, in which uh, they can actually turn and angle in their, their specific percentages. I'm just going to leave all these as standard. We can also look at our dynamic effect, uh, effects depending on um, the, the amount of movement our vehicles can perform, but because we're working at fairly low speeds, they'll have little to no effect in this particular instance. And finally, we can choose whether or not we want to save our changes to our, um, um, our current project for this session only, or we, we can actually push this to make all of our options as default for all the projects we're doing in the future. For this particular instance, I'm just going to leave it for this project, just in case I want to change it again in the future. OK, so before we start drawing our vehicle paths, let's have a look at the vehicles themselves. Up within our swept path ribbon, we have a little button up here called Vehicle Library Explorer. Once selected, this will actually give us a full list of the different vehicles that we have available for us to use. This can be added to should you have additional vehicles you need to add in, but generally the out of the box um, set of vehicles tends to be fairly good. We have a section in here for British design vehicles. And this includes everything from standard sort of um, articulated lorries through to uh, London fire brigade vehicles like pumping appliances and platforms. Um, we have some uh, buses sitting within here as well. 
and we also have one of the standard design vehicles for um, car park designs. At the top of this list we've also got some more unusual vehicles. So we've got things like commercial aircraft um, and military aircraft and hover, hover, um, helicopters. And near the bottom of this list we also have something called real world vehicles. So this also includes some more slightly more unusual vehicles like agricultural vehicles or things like forklifts and commercial trucks that might also be quite useful within your design project. Within each one of these elements, we can actually select one of these um, vehicles. So I'm just going to go into our FTA 2016 area and look at some of our articulated vehicles because this is what I want to actually track around our current project. I'm going to select this um, 16 meter articulated vehicle and select OK for this particular vehicle to be able to be used. So this is, the, this is the truck that I actually want to track around my site just to check that my design parameters work. We'll try out some other vehicles later in the demonstration. Next we're going to go up to this Auto Drive Arc button. When selected we'll be prompted with some drawing settings. So this is basically how we want to set up our drawing and what we're actually looking at. Some of these settings will be pulled from our standard settings area. So as we can see here, we've got our drawing unit represents one millimeter, which we set up earlier. We can also set up our driving conventions here. So in the UK, obviously we drive on the left, but uh, should you be setting up a driving um, requirement for um, something in another country like the US, um, then you can change this to be driving on the right. Um, we've also got some options to um, choose the preferred ang angle of uh, um, rotation. We've got the different surfaces we can work with. So AutoTrack will allow you to import 3D um, buildings into your model. So if you're working in a Revit environment, you can export out as a 3D DWG and bring that in to look at um, your overall building analysis and your heights that you're working with. Um, we can have a look at that later too. And then we've also got our paths area. So within this paths area, we've got our layers. So we talked earlier about setting up a layer convention. Here we've actually got our, the options in which in, in which we can actually choose the ways that we want our layers to be formulated. Um, generally speaking, having one standard layer per track is, is a sensible one to pick um, because it's a very quick and easy option to work with. But if you're having to work within the BS1192 layering structure, you may want to pick this one at the bottom. Generally for all of the other, the other settings within here, they're fine as they are. Um, you have also got the option to make these default for all of your uh, projects going forward. Once you go OK, you'll be prompted with a little vehicle that you can then choose to place somewhere on your site plan. Once you've decided where you actually want to place the front of your cab, you'll also get an option to choose the rotation, of, the starting rotation of your vehicle. So I want this vehicle to be running down this road so that I can actually take it through this main gate into the site. So I'm going to click once to place the vehicle, click a second time to set its rotation, and then we'll be set it, setting up this, this position option. So at this point, you'll be getting this um, dialog box pop up saying that you've now placed your vehicle. Do you want to proceed? You have some options within here to set up the rotation of your wheels or the particular speeds that you're wanting to run it at. Um, but generally speaking, you can just continue. If you're only planning on showing a um, plan swept path analysis, um, these standard settings will be fine. So we're just going to proceed. Once we've decided to continue, we can then track our vehicle around our site using the tools available. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on our site here because we want to take this truck through the main gate of our um, site. What you'll see is if we try to track this vehicle around the site, it will move within the constraints of the design uh, vehicle as it's set up within the template. So what we can now do is set essentially keyframes for steering this vehicle around the site. So as I click, I create some, some key positions for each one of the turning radiuses. Um, as I move around the site, I can now steer this vehicle through this um, particular gate and then up to the top of this site. Um, each one of these clicks will allow me to show both the, the path of the vehicle and also the path, the, the um, swept area of the vehicle as it's moving around the site. So we're just going to move this all the way up to the, um, the top of this turning area and stop the, the turning circle as we go around. 
what you can see here is it was sh it's showing the maximum constraints of the vehicle as we go around this roundabout area at the top um, to ensure that we're not exceeding the um, maximum turning circle for this vehicle going round what is essentially a fairly tight bend. And we're going to just stop it um, at this um, uh, give way point just here and press escape. Once we've pressed escape, we've essentially finished our first auto track path. So if I just zoom out very slightly, we can see that we've got our full track um, of our vehicle running around our site and we can get around this uh, loop at the top end. The good thing is our auto track has actually already created um, a new layer for us over here, ATR01, and each subsequent um, track that we create will be given a new number. Um, these numbers are illustrated within our um, track itself. So this is track number one that we can see here. And obviously we can change the type of vehicle or the, um, uh, the position of where these tracks are gonna run uh, as we work our way through our design and checking that we can get our vehicles through our, um, our site. We can create multiple paths within the same design file. So I'm just going to quickly select a new car that we want to use from here. We're going to pick this Volkswagen Beetle and create a new path into one of these parking spaces. I'm just going to start over here in exactly the same way as I did before, except now that we've got a much smaller vehicle to actually tra um, travel around our site, um, we've got a little bit less constraint that we need to worry about in terms of the design position. So I'm just going to pull this all the way around here um, and then hopefully just steer this into this parking space uh, as close as um, as close as I can um, for, for demonstration purposes. So we're going to press escape and we're now happy that we've got this in this area. What we can now do, now that we've finished our swept paths, we can add a little bit of extra detail in showing the profiles of the vehicles that we've used. So up on the swept path ribbon we have an insert profile button. If we select this button we can then select one of the paths that we've used and place down the profile of the vehicle that we've used in the space. I'm going to select the other, other path as well so we can show both of the vehicles that we've used on this project. And we're just going to have a little zoom into this area. So this now shows the, the uh, side view of each one of the vehicles with various different dimensions relating to its length and width um, that have been used to create the sweat path analysis on our site plant. Once this has been completed and we're happy with the detail that we have here, we also have the option to um, animate our, um, our swept path analysis, should we wish to. Up at the top, we have an animate button. This allows us to see the two paths that we've created and show an animated view of the vehicles running around those paths to check that they actually still fully work. If I press play, and we'll just speed this up very slightly, we can see the two vehicles running around this path um, until they come to a, a stop at the end of their, their particular route. We do have the option to record this and push it out as an AVI file should we want to add a little bit of extra detail to our project. Or we can actually also produce some 3D views of this if we brought our site plan in from something like Revit or, or uh, Civil 3D. And in true, here's one I made earlier style. Um, here is the uh, overall site plan in a 3D model environment that I've actually exported from a Revit um, file um, and placed my 3D model of my truck within my site. And again, we can animate this in the same way as we did before to see if we can actually start looking at things like vertical clearances as well. We've got a little bit of a clash over here with a, with a um, vehicle gate that we will need to sort out on the site, but we need to make sure that we can actually uh, travel around our site and we're not clashing with anything in 3D space. And that essentially brings us to the end of our little whistle stop tour around the basics of vehicle tracking. And hopefully this guide has been helpful to get you started on looking at the different tools that you can use to make sure that you're putting your sweat path analysis in your projects um, and you can actually um, produce some really useful bits of data to make sure that your sites work. Should you need any more help on uh, this program or any other programs within the Autodesk portfolio, by all means contact Man and Machine and uh, we'll see what we can do to help you. Thanks a lot. Bye.